In this video, I want to go through an example of calculating reaction rates. So let's look at the problem that we're given here. So it says consider the following reaction. So we have pH three known as phosphine that can produce phosphorus gas and hydrogen gas. So right, this phosphine molecule is decomposing into phosphorus gas and hydrogen gas. It says if in a certain experiment over a specific period of time, 0 0.0048 moles of phosphine is consumed in a two liter container each second of the reaction. What are the rates of production of phosphorus gas and hydrogen gas in this experiment? Right. OK, so we've been given the um, the amount that phosphine is being consumed in this reaction and we're asked to calculate the rates of production of phosphorus and H2. Right. So we're actually being asked to solve for the uh, the rate of production of P4. Right. So this is the rate of formation, rate of production of P4. And we've been asked to solve for the rate of production of hydrogen as well. Right now, we're given actual values for the uh, concentration of time or the change in concentration and the change in time. So I'm actually going to rewrite these with the big delta. Right. So delta concentration P4 over delta T. And delta concentration of H2 delta T. Right. Delta T for us is going to be one second. Right. Because it's telling us that each second of the reaction right? We're losing this amount of pH three. So that's giving us our time interval. Our time interval delta T is one second. And we just have to figure out how much of phosphorus and H2 is actually produced during that time. Okay. So in order to do this, we, we first want to write out how the, we first want to write out our differential uh, rate equation, right? So we know that the rate for this reaction can be expressed in three ways. It can be expressed as the rate of decomposition of phosphine or the rate of formation of phosphorus or the rate of formation of hydrogen, right? And we have to write those in three very different ways. So if we're gonna uh, write this with respect to phosphine, then that's gonna be negative one over four, accounting for the stoichiometric coefficient, uh, delta pH three over delta T, Right. So that's one way to to write out the rate of the reaction. The other ways are for the products. So for pho for phosphorus, right, we can have delta P4 over delta T. Or we can write out the rate of this reaction as one six. Delta H2 over delta T. Right. Again, the six coming from the stoichiometric coefficient in the chemical equation. Right. So these are three equivalent ways that we can write out the reaction rate. Right. The rate of uh, decomposition of our reactant or the rate of production rate of formation of our products. Right. So now the only thing that we have to figure out here is the rate of the reaction, which we can actually get from the data that we've been given. Right. So uh, so basically here, what we can do is plug in our concentration of phosphine and the time interval to get the uh, the rate of the reaction. Right. So first, we want to figure out um, how much phosphine is consumed per second. Right. That actual concentration. They give us the molar amount, but we have to figure out the concentration given this volume. Right. So we need the concentration. of the phosphine change, right? So we know that uh, delta pH three, so the change in concentration is gonna be equal to, well, first of all, it's negative, right? This molar amount, right? So 0 0.0048 moles over two liters, right? Because we're dealing with phosphine in a two liter container, right? This phosphine gas in a two liter container. So, um, so again, this, we talked about this in a previous course, this moles over liter is the molarity, which we denote with a capital M, right? So molarity is moles per liter, right? So, um, we can actually, you know, do the math here and then describe this as the molarity. So we're losing 0 0.0024 molar of phosphine per second, right? 
Okay, so now we just have to plug in and solve in order to solve for our rate. So we're gonna plug and solve. Right, so if we plug in and solve here, right, for, uh, for the rate of the reaction, right, so we know that it's gonna be negative one over four delta pH three over delta T, right? So we got negative one over four. We can plug in this point zero zero, uh, this negative, 0 0.0024 molar. And our denominator, since we, we were given each second, so that's one second in the denominator, so one second. So that gives us the following as our rate of the reaction, 0 0.0006 molar per second, right? So the units here is gonna be molar per second, so moles per liter per second. So that gives us the rate of our reaction, right? This is how much the concentration is changing over time, right? Now, if we relate this, um, this molarity to the, uh, to the rate of production for each of our reactants, then we can ca calculate each of the uh, quantities that we need, right? So let's focus in on this one first, right? Since there's no, um, since there's no stoichiometric coefficient in front of this one, this is actually going to be equal to the rate, right? And what we just calculated was the rate. So the rate of production of P4, is going to be equal to 0 0.006 molar per second, right? Because it's just going to be equal to the rate with no stoichiometric coefficient needed. So this is our first answer, right? This will be the rate of production for P4. Now we need to solve for the rate of production of H2, right? Now this one actually has a stoichiometric coefficient, so it's gonna take a little bit more of a lift so we have one six delta H2 over delta T. It's gonna be equal to 0 0.0006 molar per second, right? All I have to do to solve here is just do the algebra, multiply by six on both sides, and that should give me my final answer. So delta H2 over delta T. So this times six gives you 0 0.0036 molar per second, right? And so that gives you the rate of production for H2. So we solve for the rate of production of P4 and we solve for the rate of production of H2. Note that it matches the stoichiometry, obviously, this is where our rate equations came from, right? This, uh, this H2 is going to be produced at a six times faster rate than phosphorus because of this six to one mole ratio from the original chemical equation, right? Okay, so keep in mind what we just did and, and really kind of how amazing it is. And it really just relates all of these species in the chemical reaction. We were only really given the rate of decomposition of pH three, really we weren't even given that. We were just given how much pH three was consumed over a, a second interval, right? Um, we had to use the volume in order to really get this reaction rate. And we were able to use that reaction rate to calculate how much phosphorus would be produced in a given time, how much hydrogen would be produced in a given time, what that rate would be. So, um, so just using information about the reactant, we we're able to figure out the rate of production of the products because of how linked all of these things are, right? The reaction rate uh, can be expressed in all three of these different ways and being able to relate them to each other can allow you to solve for production rates or disappearance rates for certain reactants only given information about one, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so this is one example. In the next video, I'm gonna go through another example and then we'll go into a few more concepts about chemical kinetics.